drilling. It's not that there was an accident. It's what they did afterwards, okay? We won't get into the politics of that. So what we need to understand now is energy. How do we detect energy? How do we learn about energy? There's something called the electromagnetic spectrum here. Now, since this chart, I'm told the people are now out of business because it was so hard to find this one. So it's put out by the Exploratorium, and I told them 10 years ago, and they laughed at me, told me I was wrong, and I left. We do increments of 10 to the thirds. So whenever you're talking about picometer, nanometer, micrometer, millimeter, these are all 10 to the thirds is how we do it. 10 to the minus third, minus 6, minus 9, minus 12, plus 3. So the standard that they use is the meter. So 10 to the third is a kilo, kilometer. Next is megameter. You never hear anybody call them megameters. I, I don't get it when they talk like it was 10,000 kilometers. I'm like, well, wait, what, 100,000 kilometers. That would be technically one megameter. You see this here? So what this chart does here, it's pretty cool. This is higher energy down here. And what these waves are, we're able to determine the energy by the waves. And the length of the wave, I mean, look at this. This wave here is a kilometer. So when you're picking up radio waves, that wave, I've heard 30 meters. I don't know why we're already to a kilometer here. But these are long, long waves. The energy of these are like for power and telephone, they call it. Audio frequencies, I mean, these are the frequencies that we hear with sound. So these are waves, they look at the waves. What else do they show here, the frequencies? Telephone lines, we've got whistlers. See, this is stuff I don't even know about. Navigation, okay, we get the, uh, the citizen bands, they call them, all these radio waves. But I mean, look how much of that chart is just radio waves. Okay, so if I said before it was higher energy, I didn't mean higher energy. It's lower energy, but longer wavelengths. So the longer the wavelength, lower energy it is. So radio waves. Radio waves are passing through us right now. I mean, look at these things. Some of them say a kilometer. I knew they were 30 meters is what I figured. So let's look across the top here what we're talking about. These are low frequency radio waves, medium frequencies, very high. Where is this? Here we go. Very high frequencies. Have you ever heard of VHF? Well, that's a very high frequency. UHF is ultra high frequencies. So this will confuse non-scientists that frequency is almost like the inverse of the wavelength. So you're going to have frequencies in hertz. I, I guess I don't mean that. It's not the inverse. But when you're counting cycles per second, okay, megahertz is where the FM radio dial is. FM is here. And FM is just a short little thing in between the TV, channel 6 and channel 7. Uh, what you'll see out here also are, these are things I didn't even know. See, amateur and citizen band. So all those are following into these waves that they're saying here are like anywhere from a meter, a little less than a meter to a kilometer. There's a lot on this chart, and I'll admit, I don't know all this stuff out here. Radar bands, the radars here, look, see, I know there's different atmospheric levels is what these are, the PLS, XK, QV levels. These are levels of the atmosphere that they bounce it off. So the higher up, I guess, was would go longer or further on the Earth. Uh, here we go. TV and FM is right here on this little band. And I love the fact, because I used to have the old television where you tune in between channel 6 and channel 7, and you would pick up FM radio. 
but you couldn't tune it very good, so I think you only got like one station. Loosen this up here. So th what we're talking about is right in here. Do you see this here? 54 megahertz. It's channel 2 to channel 6. Then at 88 megahertz, that's the bottom of the FM dial, right? When you're playing with the FM down there at 88, all the way to 108 megahertz. Then at 174 megahertz is where channel 7 to 13 comes in. So did you ever notice when you played with your antenna on the television? It went from 2 to 13, then you had a switched button to get to UHF. So now UHF, they're saying here, are frequencies or wavelengths. So now they're just talking frequencies up here. Megahertz is 10 to the 6, so that's like a million. That works good for M there, capital M. There's supposed to be capitals when they're on the, the big side of 1. So we've got cellular phones. See, that's in a little thing in the UHF television range. See, I didn't know that. Now that's when this chart was made. The cell phones might have a different thing now. So 806 megahertz, is that where the, all the cell phones are now? UHF TV, what's that go up to? Like, uh, I don't know. Doesn't even say what the highest station, 69 I guess. So channels 14 to 69 UHF are in the, what's called ultra high frequency. Okay, this is a quick introduction to this stuff. Now, what I learned about the pollutants, which is the topic of today's discussion, water vapor is one of the major pollutants in the atmosphere. So when we look here, we're seeing that these frequencies here, they're calling it water vapor. Do you see how wide a range this is? There is so much water in our atmosphere. The visible light that we see is just one little segment along this chart. So what we're showing here, these are all the wavelengths. Now we showed how the radio waves over here, this is low energy, long wavelength, big wavelength, low energy. Frequencies are still kind of high, I mean, a million. So when we see here, this is all our television, FM radio, cell phones, is this little block here, right? Now, visible light, though. We have to get up to higher energy here, excuse me, to visible light. But look how skinny visible light is again. This is in the nanometer range. So whenever they're talking about the spectra, when you take white light, break it up in a prism, you get from red to blue, the old Roy G. Bibb thing, these are in frequencies that red is lower energy, infrared, see the infrared is here. So this is like heat. Do you know that the majority of the energy that comes from the sun is in the infrared range? It's light we can't even see, it's heat. So when you see people now with their infrared night goggles and stuff, they call it, it's picking up wavelengths of heat. So that's why a body at, what is it, 98.6 Fahrenheit for your temperature? I know it's 37 centigrade Celsius, whatever they call it now. That's a temperature that's warmer than the surroundings. So when you hold an infrared, you'll pick up those wavelengths of anything hot. See right here, they call it room temperature. Room temperature of 293 degrees Kelvin, which is like 78 degrees, there's a certain amount of energy just in the air. And it has a vibration, 400 watts per square meter. There's energy in the air, in your room right now. An interesting thing is the pressure. A lot of people think, everybody take a deep breath. <gasps> now let it out. <sighs> You think it takes more energy to breathe in when actually all you do is relax your diaphragm and the pressure of all the air on top of you and around you is forced into your lungs. 14.7 pounds per square inch is pushing on you. That's like somebody standing on your foot. So that much pressure is 
forcing into your lungs. So you, when you use energy,